Join me and my guest Mike Keen as we discuss Michael Pollan's In Defense of Food while we prepare a meal of mostly plants and not too much on Dinner and a Book. If cooking is so important to our survival, why has cooking collapsed in our society? Our stomachs expand and our brains shrink. Why did this happen? And why are we one of the most obese nations in the world? To find out, let's meet our food guru, Mike Keen, as we discuss Michael Pollan's In Defense of Food and discover some food that we can only prepare if it's grown locally. Dinner and a Book is made possible by a generous grant from the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation. Well, welcome, Mike. This book is really fascinating. I think I learned a lot, and I think you told me you are cooking according to Michael Pollan, right? Yeah, for the last couple of months since we chose this book, I've been uh, using his, his uh, rules to uh, cook my diet. And we're going to talk about those rules, but you know, the book really talks a lot about personal health. And Mike, why do you think people today are so confused about food? Well, I think part of it has to do with that we've got a $32 billion uh, food processing industry that's really trying to uh, trick our taste buds and fool our eyes uh, rather than trying to uh, systematically contribute to healthy bodies. Well, today we're going to try to do the opposite. What are we going to accomplish or, or try to accomplish? Well, we're going to try to uh, make uh, some really uh, appealing meals out of some fresh food, not food products. Absolutely, and that means if we can't get it in our garden or in our local market, we're, we didn't buy it, we didn't bring it in, right? Right, and we're starting with uh, basically fresh food and fresh uh, uh, produce. Uh, not uh, processed, uh, already prepared uh, food in boxes. We're shopping around the periphery of the supermarket. We're not going in the interior at all. I'm getting started though with my olive oil. I did not press this in my basement. I have to That's have some enough. oil, so I've got some uh, olive oil and I'm going to do a basic uh, tomato sauce. You know, the tomatoes are, are in season now, a little bit slow, but they're starting. And I'm going to make just a basic sauce that I could freeze for the winter or we could adapt for your zucchini today. And tell us what you're doing. Well, I'm going to start uh, roasting a pepper and you can do that uh, under the broiler or you can just stick it right on top of your burner. And so... Just a little past the click. Just there right there. You go. And I'm just going to put it there and that's just going to burn that skin while we get involved with some other stuff. And we'll keep our eye on it. And then I'm going to start making um, a little bit of a um, zucchini uh, pasta, which uh, to do that, I basically uh, just take a, a potato peeler and shave out my um, zucchini and then we'll cut this into uh, uh, fettuccine like uh, slices. Great, great idea. And I'm starting with a little uh, garlic here. I'm making my first, the basic, what the Italians call sort of the uh, sofrito, olive oil, garlic, and onions. And I'm using some red onions because they have a little bit more of a kick to them and I want this to be a little bit more of a kick. Well, one so, of the secrets of uh, cooking with fresh ingredients is using the full palette of uh, food that's out there uh, so that when you can bring those uh, onions and, and bring the garlic and bring some of those herbs to the plate, uh, that helps uh, uh, make it taste much better. And this is really going to be simple food. We are not adding helpers or stretchers or fillers, we're using basic food. And I, um, I also want to talk about the book, the way it's divided. We have three areas in this book. It's the age of nutritionism, the Western diet, and then the final is getting over nutritionism. So nutritionism is, is, is basically, it's the science of food. Uh, but unfortunately what's happened is the scientists have basically reduced our food ingredients to their, ver their various in, uh, component parts, or what we refer to as nutrients. Um, and then uh, the food processing industries try to reconstruct food products using those nutrients, but what we've lost in the process is the kind of the holistic impact of our diets. And it turns out uh, that uh, we are the only species 
uh, on the planet who needs professional experts to tell us how to eat. Right, exactly. And we're afraid about this now. We think, well, I better get a package that says low fat, or I better buy something that says good for your health. And I think we've been a little bit tricked by this food. Now, I'm going to be adding some uh, white wine, and of course we've got some Tabor Hill wine, our locally grown wine, produced wine, and I think we should sample it and make Sounds sure it, to me. that it tastes local, don't you think? Yeah, in the meantime, I've prepared um, our zucchini, uh, fettuccine, and rather than using a pasta, just simply uh, um, shave it and cut it into thin strips, and we'll use that a little bit later on uh, with your uh, tomato sauce. So that's going to be taking the place of the pasta, and actually, if you have pasta, I suggest getting the whole wheat pasta. Uh, and what is your preference on pasta? Um, I like the whole wheat pastas as well. Um, right. And uh, also some of the uh, spinach pastas I think are also uh, really good. Uh, next, what I'm going to start doing, I guess, is I will uh, cut this uh, mustard greens up. That's going to be uh, the base of our pork dish. And I am going to add some basil for my garden. I have a heirloom tomato. The tomatoes have been kind of slow this year, but I'm going to add, a, um, chop all these locally grown tomatoes, and we're going to mash them up in the olive oil and the garlic and the onion. Add a little bit of jalapeno, because we tried to stay true to this diet. No cumin, no coriander, because we can't produce it locally, but we can grow jalapeno peppers. And a, a wonderful uh, set of herbs that we can bring in from our, back, our backyard. One of the crucial distinctions that uh, Michael Pollan makes in this book is, a, is the distinction between food and food products. Yes, let's talk about that. And you really have to that. understand that to understand his approach. Food is something that we can pick up from our garden. It's not been processed. Food products are, are products that have been uh, reconstituted. So uh, folks take a, all those separate components of food apart. They're nutrient components, the vitamins, the minerals, uh, these elements, the carbohydrates, the proteins, they separate them out and then they reconstruct them. Uh, and one would think that that would come together and give us something that's very healthy. But in fact, um, it ends up that uh, the, as long as we've been doing that, the more we've been processing our food according to uh, uh, the principles of food uh, and science and nutritionism, uh, we actually have been getting uh, less healthy and more obese. Well, you know, and there's so many more books about diet. There's so many more books. I think people... I think he said people are confused because they don't know and so they think the next best diet is going to do it. But like you said, Mike, you read this book, you've been following the principles, we try to do that too. I mean, we're not buying bagged food, we're not buying boxes of things that are going to, that say, you know, low fat, healthy, endorsed by the government as healthy and we're trying to by natural it's, food. It's also fun. I, when I've picked up these greens, I, I picked up uh, the greens from uh, Ether Bartell at uh, Bartell's Farmer's Market. Talked to her a little bit. I picked up um, the pepper that we're doing from Marge at uh, the Van Wolf uh, Farmer Market. So you get to know the people uh, as you uh, go along. I'm going to cut our pork into some medallions right. that we can then pound out and that way uh, we'll be able to uh, saute those. And I'm going to add some chopped carrot. I'm going to mash my tomatoes. And I'm just going to add some white wine. We're going to let this simmer for a while. And I've, I've had friends that have had their sauce simmering all day. And it just fills the house with great aromas. And red wine, white wine, and you're doing a little pounding there. I'm going to add some chopped carrots as well. This is I like about as processed as our food is going to get, right, right here. <laughs> what you're doing, you're processing the I'm processing the pork. Yes, and I'm going to mash the carrots. doesn't take any unpronounceable chemicals to do that. Well, you know, this age of nutritionism, it started, what did I think, around the late 70s, 80s? Well, kind of coming out of World War II and, and then uh, really picked up uh, in the... Uh, in the 60s and, and the 70s. And before uh, you knew it, you're making things out of cans. Your soup bases are all canned soups. Now, I, you know, that's the way a lot of people were doing it then. Oh, and how's your pepper? My pepper's coming along really well. What you really want to do is you, that's, that looks like it's being burnt, but you want it to be burnt. As a matter of fact, you want that thing to be totally black and charred all over. We're going to take it, we're going to throw it into a simple paper bag, uh, and roll this up and then you just let it sit and that'll let the uh, skin and the pepper kind of complete cooking right. and then after that we'll take it out and we take the uh, take the skin off of it and uh, we will um, 
uh, use it in our next dish. And I have some oregano from the garden I'm adding in. I've got my basil. Uh, we've got a little of your jalapeno pepper. I'm going to add some white wine. We're going to let this simmer and simmer. And I'm going to mash it down a little bit, let it cook a little bit more. And uh, we're going to uh, continue on our merry way. But you know, sometimes people say, well, how do I get this good food? Well, you're out driving around. Somebody has a little stand in front of their house. They've been raising food. Stop and buy it. Let's or yeah. farmer's market. Farmer's uh, market. Fruit stands, farmer's stands. Sure, you don't work. have to grow it yourself. So stop well, I'm and buy gonna it. I'm going to turn over my board here so we avoid any kind of um, food contamination with the pork. Oh, and good I'm idea. also going to uh, you know, get a new knife because we don't want to cut fresh vegetables with the, uh, the pork knife. And with that, we're going to take a little break here and look at some of these wonderful stands where you can shop. Stop and shop. Our book is Michael Pollan's In Defense of Food, and I am going to add a little bit of sweetener, honey, to my tomato sauce. It's got a little zing to it, so we're not going to use sugar. We're going to use honey from North Liberty, Indiana. And Mike, we've talked about nutritionism and what it is. Let's talk a little bit about the Western diet. Define good. it for us as you get started. Well, there. the Western diet is basically a diet that's evolved over the last 40 years uh, in the uh, United States and Western Europe. And it's a diet that's largely made up of a lot of processed foods, a lot of food products that have added fats and sugars, um, right. and uh, not a whole lot of vegetables, fresh fruits, uh, or whole grains. I'm going to uh, get our uh, zucchini going here, our and, zucchini pasta. And I'm doing uh, peaches. I'm going to do peaches with honey and some berries and peach preserves from Judy Gosh's Retro Cafe in New Buffalo. We're, we're staying as local as we can. I'm gonna add a little basil, a little whipping cream, and we're gonna have a nice, light, very healthy dessert. We talked about the age of nutritionism, the Western diet. A lot of people that adapt the Western diet don't do well health-wise. They come up with diabetes and heart problems. And what we, we wanna get over this point of what things are. How can we move on and actually leave this idea of nutritionism and get a good diet. Well, we don't need a food scientist to tell us how to do that. As a matter of fact, Michael Ful Fullen gives us a seven word answer. Eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Exactly. Again, listen to that, Very it's really simple. simple. Say it's it again. Eat food, not food products, not too much, and mostly, mostly plants. plants. There's it's your brilliant. mantra. That's uh, the motto right there. And he also gives us a couple of um, a couple of rules that we can follow to do that. Number one, don't eat any food that your great grandmother would recognize. Right. And don't eat food whose package label has unpronounceable words, particularly the first five ingredients. You want to avoid that. You want to. You want to buy things that you know what is in the food, so avoid that. What's the other one about shopping well, in the supermarket? Uh, you want to make sure that when you shop in the grocery market, shop on the peripheries, because if you think about it, the peripheries is where you get the fresh food, you get the produce, you get the meat, you, you get, get the, the uh, dairy products. products. Right. Um, and that's also where you're going to find increasingly your supermarkets, like our local supermarkets here in uh, town, uh, are carrying local foods they are. grown by local growers, as well as uh, also providing us with many uh, organic options. And they're on the periphery of the supermarket. Yeah. Right. And also, Mike, Michael says, well, get out of the supermarket. Buy at these vegetable stands. Farmer's markets. Farmer's markets. Your garden, your neighbor's garden. Probably ought to get your neighbor's permission, but. Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, that's a good way. We, you have great neighbors. A great vegetable make good neighbors or and vice versa. Or a little bit of your own. I, my wife and I have just made a little start. Um, we, we've grown a few herbs. Uh, and, and just a couple of uh, plants, not too many because we don't want to get overwhelmed with it and once we can manage that, we'll change it. Uh, this is the pepper that I uh, put in that uh, paper bag. 
uh, and it takes right. a little bit longer than we have to put it together. Right. So I actually did one a little earlier. When you bring it out of that paper bag, it's going to be all burnt, and what you do is you take the skin off of it, and then we're simply going to uh, get the seeds out by uh, cutting around the top of it. And I asked what you do if you have electric. Well, you can't put it on an electric uh, top. You have to... It's just stick it in the broiler, the broiler. and put it in the broiler. And for remember, how long? For how long? Uh, well, until it's burnt. And you really burnt. want to burn all the sides. You can't, you can't overcook this. You just really, you really want to burn it because that's what takes off the uh, uh, skin. Uh, and it also is what uh, allows uh, uh, the thing to sort of get cooked and get ready. Smells. But you can see, um, here we are. Uh, we're just ready to go with those uh, right now. And it smells wonderful in here. I'm using cling-free peaches. I really hate to struggle with pits. Peaches are really at their peak from July to September. So make peach pie, peach cobbler. I'm just doing a simple peach with, as I said, a little peach preserve, honey, and uh, I'm gonna add uh, a little bit of basil. I'm gonna to add this. a little bit of wine to my mustard greens. This mustard greens are something a little unusual, um, but uh, it's kind of like spinach. Uh, but with nature adds a little bit of pepper to it for us and there's all kinds of fresh greens uh, in the market and you know I encourage you to experiment with them a little bit and you just sort of saute these down uh, and uh, we'll use those uh, as a base for our pork. Isn't that interesting? Try some of these mustard greens and kale and try a rutabaga and some turnips. They really add a Wonderful addition. I'm going to make do a little whipping cream here. Okay, so your zucchini has taken the place of pasta. Yeah, and it doesn't take much to get it ready. I've, we've only been cooking that for about three, four minutes, and it's already ready to go. Because with the zucchini, what you really want to do is you just want to just want to get it, bring it to heat. You don't want to overcook it uh, and overcook the nutrients. So we're just going to uh, take uh, that zucchini and we're going to put it into a little serving dish here. It looks beautiful. And then we take some of that wonderful sauce uh, that you are making. You're a fast and cook. And just too. put that over the top. And the, I have my uh, peaches pretty well cut up here. Added a little uh, basil. And there we go. There's. Uh, Isn't our that beautiful? Dish. Beautiful. We've got to add a little leaf on the top of that. Let's see if I can do that. Beautiful. That is so nice. All right, I'm going to start looking at this dessert. And I've, I've walked away. You're using that, so I'll get this. Another spoon here. I'll bring these peppers back to heat here. Little honey, little peach preserve, locally made. And we're going to put this in our parfait dishes with a little whipping cream and some I'm blueberries. Just cut a little bit of uh, pepper here. So when we sort of think about these things, you know, it might seem like, gee, uh, healthy eating is difficult, but actually healthy eating is really pretty simple uh, to, uh, to put together. And it's a lot of fun uh, as you go out and try to figure out ways to take these seasonal ingredients, uh, bring them to your table. And one of the things I like about it is you can actually taste the place in which you live. Oh, that's a good way of saying it. Taste the place where you live. And you know, another rule of Michael Pollan's is don't flu fuel yourself the same place where you fuel your car. That's actually been one of the things, and, and uh, that's one of the problems sometimes in the cities. In many parts of the cities, the only place that people can get food is at a, is, is a, uh, a, a local gas station. And they don't have fresh food there. They don't have fresh fruit. They don't have no, uh, They have any bags kind of, and bags uh, of ingredients with those five unpronounceable ingredients. Well, why don't we go ahead while you're working on that, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to, plate, You're uh, going to plate our meal. So basically what we do is we just take oh. some of these uh, mustard greens and that uh, went in the wine. Put, a little bit of a, put a little bit of a base there. And then we're going to make a little Napoleon. And the way you do that is by just put down a little pepper, put a little piece of meat over it, and then put another piece of pepper over it, a little piece of meat on that. And then what we'll do is we'll just garnish that, that with is so a couple beautiful. of little uh, jalapenos to give it a little bit of a little bit of sauce, uh, a, little a little bit kick. of uh, kick. And, uh, and all of our ingredients are locally grown. Look how quickly you did this using natural ingredients, 
right here. Are, what is your what is your spice or herb you're going to add to your mustard green? Anything, or is it the food? Well, you and can the pepper just uh, you can start by sautéing a little bit of onions. Uh, would be a good way to uh, begin with that, and a little bit of garlic. I often will use uh, garlic uh, and onions in about uh, everything that I do um, to start with. Uh, in this particular case, I didn't because really. Uh, during the summer when the food is fresh, I like to let the, fre the food speak for itself rather than put a lot of other uh, flavors and ingredients around it. And it looks like your food could say a lot of interesting good things. This was a quick meal and we, well, mustard greens, I think it's fantastic. And heirloom tomatoes, we were talking about various kinds of tomatoes when they became popular again. People looked at them and sort of went, ooh, they're kind of purpley or they yeah, look funny. A, a, law, a rule that Poland doesn't have but it's a rule of my own, if it's perfect, don't get it. That's not food. That's <laughs> it, a food product. It might be uh, manufactured. Yeah, look for that, that, that food that's got the little bruise or maybe it's a little wrinkled, maybe not perfect color. The, 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 the look might not be appealing to your eyes, but the flavor We'll just knock you off your socks. And you know, Michael also says, sit down and eat, eat at a table, don't snack, try not to eat alone, eat with people, and you, you enjoy your food so much more. And the book is really absolutely fantastic, and I really liked it, did you? It's a good read, uh, and it's also instructive. Very instructive, absolutely, but fun too. And you know, we want to show how simple this could be. Start your own little garden on the back of your deck. Keep it simple. You said K-I-S-S, -S, K -I -S -S, right? keep it simple. Keep it simple. So let's just take a moment and go to see my deck with three pots of food. We'll be right back. Mike, I finally have a green zebra ready. These are special heirlooms. That's my favorite. That's my favorite type of heirloom. Heirloom tomatoes are, are the tomatoes our, our grandparents used to grow, and our great grandparents. Uh, and you know, you can grow these right in your uh, back uh, deck or in your backyard, just like this. Absolutely. You said keep it simple. Start simple. You don't have to plow up your yard the, the first year. Plant some tomatoes. I've got some heirlooms, and we've got some. Well, you've also got basil. some some basil. Yeah. God, I love the smell of that and. That's here's a some, Thai basil. Some, some Thai basil, two different kinds of basil, and here's some sage. Uh, we're just getting ready to make some pesto with sage and some local walnuts when they get ready. Nice Wonderful. little bit of lettuce there. It's the way to start, and you have to water them frequently, but they certainly pay back dividends in great fresh food. And you can put this on your table, and this is uh, um, just what Poland tells us to do. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it fresh. Right. Grow your own food. And, you know, we're going to go back and see our final meal preparation. So come along with us. Our book is Michael Poland's In Defense of Food. And let's have Michael's motto one more time. Eat food, not too much, mostly plants. And that is what we've tried to do today. Let's look at some of the food we, you prepared. Let's talk about that. Uh, the uh, fettuccine, a zucchini fettuccine with uh, your tomato sauce, and then a pork and a roasted yellow pepper Napoleon with a little bit of mustard greens and garnished with uh, a little bit of jalapeno. And if you can't take jalapeno, just push them to the side. We finish with some locally grown peaches, whipping cream with a little honey and peach jam made locally and a little wine from Tabor Hill, our local wine. But you, you have one more item, I think, you want to mention. Well, one of the things Poland tells us is that throughout history, humans have eaten 80,000 edible species, 3,000 regularly. But right now, three quarters of our calories come from just four, corn, wheat, soy, and rice. Mm, I don't think that's exactly what we have in mind, is it? No, we should go back to using those species like the mustard greens and Absolutely. other things in our backyards. Absolutely, yes. And get away from the manufactured food, the low-fat food, the food that says we're the best and we're healthy. Just get your food from your backyard, your garden, and make some. Shall we toast that? We certainly should. And let's toast good food, good friends, good books make for a very good life. See you next time. Dinner and a Book is made possible by a generous grant from the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation.